Hello friends, I am Arpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 22nd of August and we are going to cover the most important topics which are recurrently in news. As we do every day, we are also covering three topics today. The first topic is the personal data protection bill. We will be analyzing this personal data protection bill along with its basic provisions as it has been passed by the parliament. Now, this reminds me that this particular bill, personal data protection bill has gone through a lot of ups and downs in the parliament. Earlier, the Supreme Court formed Justice B. N. Sri Krishna committee, which recommended passage of this bill in order to, you know, protect the personal data of the citizens. We also need to understand that what is personal data? Personal data is any data about you as an individual which reveals your identity. It can be your email ID, it can be your you know, password, it can be your face, it can be your I would say uh, phone number, your Aadhaar number, your biometric data, all that is personal data. That data which reveals or gives information about a person, any kind of information, that is personal data. Finally, the government has passed the Personal Data Protection Bill 2023 in the recently concluded monsoon session. Since 2019, it has been lingering on to get passed. It was earlier introduced also, but it was taken back by the government in 2022, that is last year. But again, it was reintroduced this year and it has been passed finally. So we'll see what are the basic details of this particular bill and what are the analysis with respect to that. Then next is pulses prices. Now it is an estimate that the pulses prices are going to go up rapidly. Just like the tomato and ginger prices, we experienced, you know, an, um, an upheaval in those prices in the last month, which contributed into the retail inflation. The retail inflation topic we covered a few days ago, where we, we saw that the retail inflation for the month of July was around 7.44% and that was, you know, a record high since the last 15 months. Now the tomato prices have started to come down, but it is expected that the pulses prices will go up. Reason is there is deficient rainfall in the month of July and due to this deficient rainfall, there is less area under cultivation or net zone area for the pulses has reduced. So we'll cover all this in this particular topic. And last is the National Research Foundation. This also aims to, you know, increase research expenditure in research because India is one such country where expenditure on research and development is very low. You need to understand the importance or significance of research and development. We should understand, you know, the events in history. Now, when I talk about the events in history, 1945 to no, 1991 was the era of Cold War. The Cold War was fought between USA and USSR. What happened in the end of this Cold War in 1991-92, USSR disintegrated. There were many reasons for USSR to be disintegrated and one among the major reason was their neglect in research and development. They did not focus on research and development. Whereas their rival USA had, you know, extra focus on research and development. The information technology revolution, which we see driving the world today is, I would say, a result of research and development in USA. The Silicon Valley is there in USA, where, you know, all the big tech companies are headquartered. Those big tech companies are big today, but they were, you know, beginners in the 1950s, 1960s. With constant research and development, they became so big. And USA is now controlling things. Internet, per se, it was an accidental invention of the US Army Research and Development Wing. It is mentioned there in your NCRT also, Political Science NCRT Class 12, that internet was an accidental invention of the US Research Department. 
US Army Research Department. Now, internet is driving the world. The world depends on the internet, the world wide web. In your NCRT also, it is given one statistic of around 2003-04, the expenditure by countries on military research and development. Now, USA was at number one position. And USA's investment on R&D was somewhere around $50 billion. But that is not so significant. The fact, the significant fact is USA was at number one and 2 to 12th or 2 to 13th position countries. If we club their investment on research and development, that was less than USA's alone investment on research and development. And you see USA's military presence, you see USA's naval presence. It is, it is immense. It is unmatchable presently which gives USA a lot of power, an edge, I would say. And research and development has had a phenomenal role to play in this position of USA. So we should be focusing on research and development. It is very, very important. Okay, economic growth is important. Distributive growth is important. We are doing that. We are the world's fastest growing economy. But it will be of no use if we are not investing on research and development. We have on one hand Atma Nirbhar Bharat as a program in which we want to become self-dependent, self-reliant. We'll only become self-reliant if we have access to new and new technology. And new technology will only happen with research and development. And for increasing the funding, for increasing the focus on research and development, this National Research Foundation has been formed. There is this Anusandhan National Research Foundation Bill, which was also passed by the Parliament in this monsoon session. So we will be reading about that. We will also be comparing about India's investment on research and development with other countries' investment. So let's begin with the first topic that is Personal Data Protection Bill. Now to make you understand this in a better and holistic way, I'll first narrate one personal incident with which, which happened with us. Now one day, my wife received a call on her phone. Ki beta, I am calling from her native town. Your father, he took the name of my father-in-law, has told me that you will be filing or filling up or paying the LIC insurance premium for him. So, beta, I am sending you a link on your phone. You click on that link and pay 25,000 rupees. And he was sounding very familiar. He had all the details. Her address, she, he had name of my father-in-law, her father, that person had access to. Phone number, that person had access to. That is why he was calling. I was sitting next to my wife. I told my wife, wait, you first confirm it from your father. She called her father and she confirmed. My father-in-law refused, said, no, we are not given any, any person this authority to call you and ask for premium. We understood that it was a fake call, a fraudulent call. After a moment, that person again called and I talked to that person. I told that person that you transfer you know, 50,000 rupees, I will transfer 75,000 rupees back. In effect, you will get 25,000 rupees. That person understood that we have come to know and he disconnected the call. I reported the matter to the local police, gave his number and I don't know what happened after that. As a responsible citizen, I did my duty. The thing is, that how did that person have all that information? Or I would say that how did that person have all that personal data of my wife? Her name, her address, her phone number is all personal data. Because her personal data was not protected. You know, you give your personal data to, you know, let's suppose you have to buy a phone, a SIM card. You give your Aadhaar card. You have to, you know, uh, take a place on rent. You give your Aadhaar card. So you give your credentials, your identity proofs at multiple places and it gets prone to leaked, get leaked. And those people are having access to all this. 
you get a lot of calls during the day you want personal loans you are using this car you want loan on that all these people have that data and they are running their businesses on that that is personal data and the government wants to protect this personal data of the people and that is why this law has been passed now what was the need to pass this law actually there are three needs first is increasing online frauds due to leakage of personal data are happening just like what happened with my wife second is manipulation of data leads to non competitive practices by private companies you get a lot of calls during the day plus if this data gets leaked out of the country and with with mnc's this data is there then they will have chances to manipulate our economy by manipulating that data the data is the new gold i would say then data leakage can hamper the country's sovereignty also so it becomes important to preserve that data it becomes important to bring that data under the surveillance of an authority and that authority is none other than the government now you might be thinking why the government should have access to the our data the government can have access to your data in order to give you protection aadhar for example government has access to aadhar details of every you know aadhar card holder government has its own reasons for having it so this is the reason or this was the need for this bill to be there now key features of the bill applicability the bill will be applicable to the processing of digital personal data within india where such data is collected online or collected offline and is digitized so all these both these kind of data it will be applicable on the personal data is defined as any data about an individual who is identifiable or in relation to such data then it will also apply to processing of personal data outside india so if any data with respect to indians are uh, is being protest, uh, processed outside india then also the provisions of this bill will be applicable then consent now data will not be processed without the consent of the i would say individual now when i talk about the consent personal data may be processed only for a lawful purpose first of all for which an individual has given consent that too after the consent has been given by the individual then only it will be processed for a lawful purpose only a notice must be given before seeking consent of that person whose personal data it is consent may be withdrawn at any point in time by the person as well now rights and duties of data principal you need to understand who data principal is data principal is an individual whose data is being pro processed like in that case my wife was the data principal whose data was being processed and used the bill grants certain rights to individuals including the right to obtain information seek correction and erasure and grievance redressal now if an individual wants his or her personal data to be erased let suppose from social media or something like that then this right to erasure is also given to that person and grievance redressal will also be there if any complaint is there that complaint will also be fi filed or that can a complaint can be filed by that data principal these are some of the rights which are given to the data principal but apart from rights certain duties are also there and duties like they must not means data principals should not register a false or frivolous complaint i would say action can be taken if a false or frivolous complaint is filed furnish any false particulars suppress information or impersonate another person in specified cases means falseness should not be there in the data which is provided by the data principal now transfer of personal data outside india data can be transferred outside india only and only if central government will notify the central government will notify the countries where this data can go and which it this data which is being you know transferred to these countries will definitely be prescribed to certain terms and conditions exemptions the central government may exempt government agencies from holding your data 
और आई वुड से वेरियस सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एजेंसीज और गवर्नमेंट एजेंसीज विल बी एग्जेप्टेड फ्रॉम द प्रोविजन ऑफ द लॉ दे विल नॉट बी पीनलाइज दे कैन प्रोसेस योर डेटा द वे दे वॉन्ट दे कैन मैनिपुलेट दे कैन यूज यूज योर डेटा द वे दे वॉन्ट सो दैट इज there and this exemption has been given to government agencies for or on the following grounds first is security of the state second is to maintain public order and prevention of offenses for on these grounds you know the central government is exempted from this particular law obligations of data fiduciaries now who are data fiduciaries data fiduciaries are those people to whom you are submitting your data like let's suppose you want a sim card you go and you let's suppose you want to buy an airtel sim card you go to the airtel store you give your personal data in the form of your aadhar details your fo photo and all so airtel in this case is data fiduciary to whom you are submitting your data and it is the responsibility of the data fiduciary that your data does not get leaked it is the responsibility of data fiduciary to maintain your data with that till the time there is a time specified for every purpose that by this time you have to maintain data with yourself and after that you can dispose this data disposing does not mean transferring data this data or selling this data to anyone it will be you know deleted now data fiduciaries must make reasonable reasonable efforts to ensure that accuracy and completeness of data is there build reasonable security safeguards to prevent a data breach and inform the data protection board of india if there is any data leakages from their setup because you know hackers can hack hackers can breach their cyber security now if such things happen that data is is stolen from their i would say Uh, repository then they should be informing the data protection board of india this data protection board of india has been established by this particular law we'll read about it abhi now cease to retain personal data as soon as the purpose has been met so they will delete this personal data as soon as the purpose have been met and retention is not necessary for legal or business purpose then the storage limitation requirement will not apply in case of processing by government entities means the government entities can hold your data process your data till eternity like the government enti entities basically the government of india has your aadhar details and the government is storing those aadhar details with itself now government can store have your aadhar details till eternity government officials know what your income is from your pan card your pan card is linked with your aadhar how much income tax you are paying they are eligible to know this they are in the positions of authority is it the breach of your privacy no actually it is not the breach of your privacy per se if you are being too idealistic then you can say that yeah my privacy my private data is there with the government who is the government to do it but the government has various reasons for doing it the government has to collect taxes the government has to ensure that all the people pay taxes on time and you know how much taxes they are worthy of paying they should be paying those much taxes this brings in transparency this brings in accountability and if for bringing this kind of transparency and accountability if there is a breach of you know right to privacy let that breach be there but country is run this way only a data protection board of india as i told you that there there will be a data protection board of india and the job of this data protection board of india will be to adjudicate non compliance with the provisions of the bill let's suppose there is a data fiduciary not storing data or not acting as per the i would say provisions of the law then a complaint can be filed by data protection board of india or data protection board of india suomo to can take actions and make that data fiduciary follow the provisions of the bill the central government has control in appointing the members of data protection board the central government will be appointing the members of data protection board india yeah. penalties you know 150 crore to 250 crore penalties have been mandated 150 crore for non fulfillment of obligations for children if the data of the children and all get leaked or it is manipulated or misused and rupees 250 crore for failure to take security measures to prevent data breaches 
penalties will be imposed by the board after conducting an inquiry. So this is again a shortcoming that the penalties are very high. Another shortcoming you can say is he, the government has a lot of I would say exemptions for itself. So in the editorials which you will be reading, you will be reading the criticisms with respect to this particular bill will be centered around these provisions only. So it was important for you to know these provisions first and then you'll be able to understand those criticisms or you know for statements for this particular bill. Was this bill needed? Definitely it was needed. It was the need of the hour because you know our country is getting digitized, the data is increasing day by day. Users are also increasing day by day and frauds are also increasing day by day. So it was very, very necessary. Next is pulses prices. Now when I talk about the pulses prices, these pulses prices are expected to be very high in the times to come, in the months to come. We have just, you know, really being relieved or we are being relieved from the high tomato prices and other vegetable prices which contributed to around 7.44% inflation in July. We covered this particular issue a few days ago. So you can watch the videos where we covered this. And you know, we are just being relieved. The tomato prices are coming down. It is somewhere around 100 rupees per kg now, but it reached somewhere around 250 rupees per kg, 230, 250 like this. But now we have a new challenge coming up. That is the pulses prices. Now, why the pulses prices are expected to grow up? Below par monsoon in August. Now, according to an editorial in the Hindu yesterday, this is the driest August, which India is experiencing. There is deficient rainfall. And due to this deficient rainfall in August, the sowing area or the net sown area for pulses is reduced by almost 10% from a year ago. Now in this particular image, you will see the net sown area for various crops like for rice, maize, coarse cereals, sugarcane, bajra. No, this has increased. This is zero line, 4.3% increase for rice, 2.2% increase for maize. Whereas other crops like oil seeds, cotton, jute and mesta, jowar, pulses, it has reduced. And the highest reduction in the net zone area is for pulses. That is 9.2%, roughly touching, you know, 10%. So this is the major concern. When net zone area is less, monsoon is less, definitely, pulses production will be less and when pulses productivity will be less it will definitely lead to increase in prices of the pulses the impact if we see there was this 37 percent surge in vegetable prices obviously tomato can be the main villain over here and it had fired up retail inflation to a 15 month high of 7.44 percent in july prices of pulses have also risen sharply in recent months 13.3% in July, 10.6% in June. So 10.6% in June, 13.3% in July and expected to be somewhere around, you know, 17 to 20% in the times to come. Which pulses have been impacted? You should be knowing this also. Now economists reckon prices of pulses such as Tur Dal and Moong Dal, which surged, Tur Dal surged 34.1% and Moong Dal prices went up by 9.1%. The Tur Dal's price extremely gone up. Now it is expected to grow up further. That is why in the months coming, it is expected that the pulses inflation will be high. And now the last piece of news that is National Research Foundation. Now in the introductory part, I've already told you about the significance of research. And hence, the government of India also acknowledging this fact has passed the Anusandan National Research Foundation Bill 2023. This Anusandan National Reser Research Foundation Bill, AN ANRF it is called as, will establish NRF that is National Research Foundation. 
this nrf will be established as an apex body which will be guiding or i would say which will be showing the direction of research and development in the country who is going to do the research and development the government agencies definitely the government funded agencies definitely and most importantly the private sector the private sector's investment in the research and development in our country is somewhere around 35% means total expenditure which our country does in research and development out of that total expenditure 35% is done by the private sector one of the main reasons was the private sector faced a lot of i would say administrative hurdles in investing in this particular domain one such administrative hurdle was in the corporate social responsibility the corporate social responsibility actually is an investment which has to be done by companies who are you know having good amount of profit and and has clogged a particular amount of turnover like turnover of 1000 uh, 500 crore rupees valuation is 1000 crore rupees and average annual profit of the last 3 years is let's suppose 2 crore rupees so such countries you know contribute some of their i would say profit margins or profits into corporate social responsibility they can invest in fields like renewable energy education sanitation so that it impacts the poorest of the poor now csr also has one domain in which these countries can invest and that domain is r and d but the thing here is that if csr amount is invested in r and d that amount can be maximum invested for one year more than one year a company cannot invest more in r and d now let's suppose a company invested 10 lakh rupees in one year but after one year because research and development is something which is time taking it is not like you started research and development and everything clicked in the first go it is it is kind of hit and trial and you never know when you are you know hitting in the right direction getting the desired results but csr mandated investment by the companies only for one year in r and d that actually hampered you know or demotivated the companies to invest some portion of their csr in r and d because this felt ki this investment is going to be futile but we need to you know reform such laws these are kind of administrative hurdles which do not let the private sector to invest into r and d and hopefully this will be done do we need to you know invest in r and d definitely there is a need india is one of the lowest investors in r and d around 0.64% of india's gdp is invested by india in r and d however you know countries like israel they are investing more than 5% and we are investing only 0.64% of the gdp the target is 2% of gdp over the years our proportional i would say expenditure on research and development has reduced earlier we were let's suppose investing you know 0.8 0.9% of our gdp now we are investing 0.64% as a proportion of gdp it has reduced but when i talk about absolute expenditure on r&d that has increased how because our gdp is growing our gdp let's suppose earlier was 1 trillion dollar now 1% of 1 trillion dollar is x amount let's suppose then our gdp became 2 trillion dollar or 3 trillion dollar so 0.64% of 3 trillion dollar will be more than you know 1% of 1 trillion dollar so in absolute terms it has increased but as a proportion of gdp it has reduced because our gdp has increased so this is the scenario now this particular graph explains it well the blue lines which you are seeing is year on year expenditure by india on research and development so you know this is you can see the absolute expenditure which is increasing but as a proportion of gdp this red line which is depicting it is reducing so this is basically the scenario and 
2020-21 of our GDP was invested on R&D. Okay. And you know it is in rupees crore. So I would say in, in 2020-21 absolute terms 1,27,381 crore rupees were in, was invested by us okay, in R&D. Whereas earlier when percentage of GDP was more 0.76% then only 65,961 crore rupees was invested. Here percentage is less but the absolute amount is more. Now when I compare India's expenditure in R&D with other countries, no doubt number one position is Israel. 5.35% of Israel's GDP is invested on R&D. Followed by Korea, that is South Korea, Sweden, Belgium, USA. USA is still here. 3.42% of its GDP is invested by USA on R&D. And in absolute terms, there, there is no country in the world who can match USA's expenditure because USA's GDP is immense. India is here, 0.64%. Even countries like China, developing countries like China, they invest more than us on research and development. So it is necessary, very necessary. Now patents filed in the country in 2021, China has the maximum patents filed, more than 15 lakh patents filed, 15,85,663. Followed by USA, 5,91,000. India, 61,573 patents filed. Patents are basically, you know, intellectual property rights. You invent something new by research and development and you file up for a patent for it. Okay. Now, women in science, basically, total staff was 5,54,000 people involved in research and development. Scientific staff in R&D, 3,61,000. Out of 3,61,000, 67,000 are women only and 294,000 are men. This is again disturbing. Now salient features of this bill, Anusandhan National Research Foundation bill, it will pave way to establish NRF as a body will be established that will seed, grow and promote R&D. The proposed bill also repeals the Science and Energy Board, uh, Engineering Research Board, SERB. Now SERB will be replaced or is replaced by NRF. SERB is the Department of Science and Technology's main funding body and is responsible for funding science and technology startups, setting up incubators and funding science related projects in central and state universities. So this SERB will be replaced by the NRF. Now what is NRF? As per the recommendations of national education policy which was rolled out in uh, 2020, you know, NRF had to be established at a total estimated cost of 50,000 crore rupees. And this 50,000 crore rupees will not come at once. 10,000 crore every year will be invested. 36,000 crore is expected to come from the private sector also, which the NRF will attract. The NRF will prioritize research funding and executive council will decide on what areas need support. Now, what is executive council and all? We'll see in the next slide. NRF will forge collaborations among industries, academia and government departments and research institutes. The NRF would be under administrative control of Department of Science and Technology, just like SERB was. It would be governed by a governing board. Governing board, actually the Prime Minister will be the ex officio president of the board and two ministers. First is Union Minister of Science and Technology and second is Union Minister of Education will be ex officio vice presidents of the governing board. Then there will be this, you know, governing board will also consist of eminent research and professionals across disciplines. Then we also talked about executive council in the last slide. Executive council will be chaired by principal scientific advisor to the government of India, whose job will be to decide in which direction or in, in which domains research needs to be taken care or research needs to happen. Okay. Significance of this particular bill, democratization of science funding. It will increase the funding and it will, I would say also direct that this funding for research and development should be invested in those areas or those projects which are in peripheral, rural and semi-urban areas which are neglected and never received funding for science projects. Finding solutions to the big problems facing the Indian society. 
see scientific research if it is limited to the scientific laboratories only that is of no use or that is of less use if scientific research is done in this direction or it's done with this motive that it impacts the larger society it helps in i would say eradicating or solving the problems of the larger society then that scientific research is actually what is i would say desirable and required it should not be remain confined to the four walls of the laboratory it should be indefinitely having a positive impact on the society it should be able to solve the problems of the society and this is what the executive board has to decide that in which domains we need to do these kind of research and development like for example yesterday we talked about you know research and development in agricultural sector where we were talking about you know poverty and hunger so research and development in the agriculture sector definitely will solve the problem of the society the problem of the society that is malnutrition and hunger by making crops more climate resilient by making crops i would say more nutritious all this will happen with scientific research and definitely will have a positive impact on the society next is provides an efficient and integrated management system for research and development board will be there this executive council will be there board headed by the prime minister having two ministers that is ministry of science and education so proper mechanism is there and this is the significance of this bill let's just hope that first of all investment increases in research and development importance you know why we want increased investment if we are able to successfully bring in 50000 crores plus 36000 crore from the i would say private sector then definitely we will be reaching that you know 2% mark we should also be you know focused that once we reach the 2% mark we should be able to sustain ourselves over there means every year there should be increased allocation for research and development we have the skills we have the brains we did not have a political will but by this bill we have a political will also the intention also we just now have to wait for the results to come and definitely if we do research with good intention with a human heart definitely it will you know have a positive impact for eradicating various problems in our society and definitely we can be the wish for guru if we focus in the right direction and in the right way so this is it from today's class we will be meeting with more such exciting topics in tomorrow's session you can also mention your i would say uh, desirable topics which you want to cover in the comment section i hope you are liking this initiative of wajirao and ready and you know show some love in the comment section and show some i would say uh, desires also and on which topics you want things to be covered signing off for today bye bye jai hind